in this animated After Effects tutorial, we're going to create a UI mobile design. Hey, how's everyone doing today? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film, and this is a great tutorial because sooner or later, if you are a motion graphics artist, you're going to be asked to create some sort of mock-up of a app. And I've done this several times, and uh, it definitely comes down the road where you're going to have to be able to, you know, you're going to have a client that's like, hey, I want you to animate my mobile app or show how my app works, you know, how it integrates with my business. And you might have to show this through motion graphics. So I thought this would be a great tutorial. No plugins, just pure design and a little bit of animation. We'll set this up so you can do whatever you want. But it's really cool. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's go up to composition and click on new composition. And we're going to go ahead and set this to 1920 by 1080. And I'm using 23.976 frames per second and 15 seconds duration. Click OK. And we'll go up to layer new solid. And I'll do like a nice dark blue background and we'll just rename this layer to BG for background and click OK. And let's go up to composition, new composition again, and let's type in UI. So the frame size is going to depend on the screen size of the phone. And as you guys know, there's thousands of phones out there nowadays. So you're going to have to do a quick Google search on what the best uh, resolution here is going to be. But we're going to go with uh, 865 by uh, 1334. And I'm using, you know, once again, 23.976, 15 seconds, and we'll click OK. And this is where we're going to do all of our interface design. And this is where we're going to do our basic animation in our tutorial comp. But back in our UI comp, let's go up to Layer, New, Solid. And we'll call this one a UI Background. And we'll click OK. And then let's go up to Effect, Generate, Gradient, Ramp. And there's really no specific parameter of how you should go about designing this. It's all about preference and trying to get this to look like your client's app. I just went here and made a mock-up app. And maybe we'll come over here, do like a nice, you know, red, reddish peach sort of color. Maybe like that. And we'll do like a dark orange look for our end color like this. And, you know, this will all depend on what you're trying to do. And then let's go up to effect, color correction, brightness, and contrast. And let's just bring the contrast all the way down so it's not totally harsh. So we have a nice flat uh, gradient here. It looks nice. And of course, if you have any banding on this, you can go to the ramp scatter under gradient ramp and just push that up by a little bit and looking good. All right, so now we gotta design these elements. So let's go over to our tools here at the top and let's grab the rounded rectangle tool. And let's come here and just draw out like a nice little input box like this. Change the fill color to white and that should be good. To go into the rectangle one, go into the rectangle path one and let's increase the roundness all the way to like 130 there. So we have like this nice, you know, round rectangle like this and it looks nice. And of course we can come here and rename this layer to I don't know, uh, name field. And make sure the shape layer is selected and go to the align tab. And if you don't see the align tab, go up to window align and just go ahead and center this stuff up. And now let's go ahead and make sure the layer is selected. Hit T on your keyboard for opacity and set this down to like 30%. So we'll go ahead and start blending this in here and it's really creating a nice UI design. And let's grab the text title tool. Let's zoom in here and let's type out our text. Let's type out name. So I'm using the typeface Gotham. I'm going to go ahead and set this to you know, just medium and, you know, go ahead and just customize this by a touch, make this really small. So let's go ahead and just now grab the ellipse tool, which is underneath the rounded rectangle tool. So click a point and hold down shift on your keyboard to draw out a perfect circle and turn off the fill by clicking the word fill at the top, turn it off, set it to none, click the word stroke, and we'll set this to solid color. And maybe we'll keep it at three pixels. I think that looks nice. And of course, now what we can do is select all three of these layers and we'll go to our line tab and we'll go to the vertical center alignment and we'll center everything up just like that. Okay, so we're looking good. Let's go ahead and just color code these three layers so we don't get them confused when we duplicate them and make sure that you have it in the right spot, which we'll go ahead and just move this up by a touch. So let's go ahead and duplicate these layers, select all three of them, go up to edit, duplicate, bring them to the top here, color code these so, so we don't get them confused and bring this down by a touch and let's rename this uh, text layer to email and then we'll go ahead and repeat the process here and do the same thing again so let's go ahead and just do one more button down here so let's grab the text and say the uh, name field duplicate that bring it to the top and we'll bring this down here and what we'll do we'll go to our name field down here and click on the word fill turn this off set it to none click on the word stroke and we'll turn this on and also it's like five pixels. Then we'll hit T on our keyboard for opacity and we'll bring this back up to 100% just so we can kind of see what's going on there. And I think that looks good. And 
we'll go ahead and rename this. Uh, we'll go ahead and retitle this to continue. And we'll go to the Align tab and center this up. All right. And then if you want to go ahead and continue to build this out, maybe we'll come here to the top. Maybe we'll type in the word uh, or the words create account. And we'll make all these all bold by clicking all caps. And we'll make this a little bit bigger. Maybe we'll go ahead and make this a heavier weight. Maybe we'll do like black or something and go to the line tab and center this up. And then maybe we'll grab the pen tool to draw a, like a nice little accent line. We'll go ahead and click like this and click off it. We see we have the stroke already in there. And once again, we'll go to the align tab and just center this up. All right, that's looking good. And then we can come over here, maybe bring in our logo. So they may be the logo of the app or whatnot. Go ahead and scale this down by hitting S on your keyboard, bring up scale and just make that adjustment and center it up as always. And once again, we'll grab like the ellipse tool here and hold down shift to draw out a perfect circle. And we should get something like this, center that up. Let's go here to the top and click on the word stroke, set it to none, click OK. Click on the word fill, turn on the solid color, and hit T on your keyboard for opacity. Maybe bring this down to like 20%. And let's go ahead and put this right in the middle of our logo, put it like this, and we'll reposition our logo and circle like this. And we'll scale down our logo by a touch, and let's go back to the line tab and set our, both of these up. And it looks good. So we basically have our UI design done. Of course, you can do you know more stuff to this, but this is just the basics. Let's talk about doing a little bit of animation and how we can make the screen come alive. So what we're gonna do is say, we're gonna go ahead and type in our name or email and password. And as you can see, I've been color coding these and you can see where everything is at. So we go to our name field down here. And what we'll do is we'll go by, forward by like a second or so and make sure the name layer selected, which is your text layer. Go up to uh, edit split layer. And now what we'll do is go grab the textile tool, come in here and we'll type out our name. And then what we'll do is go over to our effects and presets, go to the animation presets here, go into the text folder, go into animate in, and we'll grab the type writer preset. And so this way we don't have to recreate the wheel here, but then hit you on your keyboard to bring up the keyframes. And as you can see, we scroll through here, we have like this nice uh, typing sort of effect in here. So it looks good. And let's drag this last keyframe in to like about two seconds and that looks good. Let's do a little bit more animation to this so we know what's selected. So let's grab like the circle. Let's go ahead and open this up. Go into the contents, go into the ellipse one, go into the stroke and let's try to match this up with a keyframe here. So let's add a keyframe for stroke width. Go forward by like two frames here, set this to five. And let's go here and copy these keyframes. Go to the last keyframe down here over here and paste those keyframes in there, right click them, go to keyframe assistance and click on time reverse keyframes. So what's gonna happen is that the circle is gonna get just a little bit bigger and it'll look nicer. So, so what'll happen is the circle will get a little bit bigger and look like this, this window is now activated. And we'll go ahead and set this to maybe seven uh, stroke width instead of five. So it's a little bit more noticeable. And then we'll do one more effect to this and we'll go to our name field here, go up to effect generate fill and we'll set the color to white and, or should I say the same color that you have your actual uh, field color at? That's the thing that you wanna keep it set at. And we'll go here, add a keyframe for color, move forward by a few frames here when our animation starts and we'll go ahead and set this to, uh, you know, maybe another color. So maybe we'll do like a nice blue color like this and we'll go forward to the end of our animation down here, add a keyframe, just hit U to bring up the keyframes, add a keyframe down in this corner. And we'll move forward by a few frames and set it back to white. So you, what we'll see now is that when our name field becomes selected, the circle gets bigger, we type out our text, and then once we're done, it goes back to its regular color and it looks good. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just apply this animation to the other two down here and I'll be right back when it's done. It's pretty much repetitive from here and that's how you can do that. So I went ahead and made a few adjustments as far as layout goes and I went ahead and finished up the animation just like this. So you should be able to apply this animation that we talked about to these other two fields. And if you want, you can go ahead and do more animation, do what you need. You can also animate this continue text to pop up so you can go to the next screen. But for the most part, we're gonna go ahead and just uh, stop it right here and we'll go into actually building out the phone and being able to see this full animation. So we'll go back to our main comp that we created uh, and it with our you know nice blue background in here. So what we're gonna do is go to our project window and we're gonna drag in this UI composition. And now we have our composition in here. It looks good. Let's hit S on the keyboard for scale. Let's go ahead and bring this down and make it a little bit smaller. And what we're gonna do now is actually build out the phone. So let's go ahead and 
to our tools here at the top, grab the rounded rectangle tool and we'll come over here and just kind of draw out a, like a nice round rectangle like this, make it nice and big. You know, try to match up the size of the phone like that, looks good. Let's go into the rectangle one, go into the rectangle path one and just increase the roundness to maybe about 80 or so. And that should be good. Let's go ahead and put this layer underneath our UI tut and let's go ahead and make some adjustments. So obviously we need to match this up a little bit better. So we'll come over here and just drag this point in and just use the arrow keys to match this up as best we can. And that looks good. And let's go ahead and bring this down by a touch. Keep this underneath. So now we have the top of our phone. Let's go ahead and just duplicate this rectangle one. And let's bring this to the bottom of our phone as well. So now we have the top and bottom. Let's go ahead and add some actual, you know, icons on here. So like, let's add like, I guess a speaker. Grab the rect round rectangle tool and just draw out like a nice horizontal line like this. Go to the fill color and make this to like a medium gray. Maybe we'll do like a darker gray like that. And then let's go ahead and grab the ellipse tool and let's draw a perfect circle for the camera and let's try to get this in the center. Kind of like so and that should be good. And then let's go ahead and do one more circle down here and this will be like the home button. I'll do it like that and should be good to go. Okay, so now we're looking good. We have our phone design in here and we can talk about animating this phone. And what's cool about this, we have all of our original animation from our UI comp and you see we have that animation going right there in the middle. So that looks pretty cool. So any actual UI animation, you will go ahead and do that in this composition. And for any mobile animation, we'll do it in here. So what we'll do is select our shape layer and our UI tut and go up to layer pre-compose and we'll call this one mobile device and click OK, and this is where we'll do all of our animation. But before we do anything, let's go up to Effect, Perspective, Drop Shadow. So we can kind of blend this in here and make it a little bit better. Let's go ahead and maybe increase the distance by a touch, go to the softness, increase that by a little bit, and maybe increase the opacity by a touch a little bit. So it just looks like it blends in a little bit better and looks nice. So there's a lot of different animation that we can do here, and I'm not gonna really do anything specific, but I'm gonna go ahead and just generally talk about some concepts here. So if you wanna animate this in 3D space, you can make this a 3D layer, hit R on your keyboard to bring up rotation. You know, you can come over here and you can animate this in 3D space. So you can really get some cool things going on here. You can do like some spins and flips if you want. But for this, I'm not gonna go ahead and do uh, 3D animation. I'm gonna do something a little bit more simple. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do some nice placement here. So maybe we'll make this a little bit bigger and you know, moves over and what I suggest doing is click on the, if you're gonna do any scaling, go ahead and click on the vector icon button right over here. Uh, it's right here in the middle, click that so you don't lose any quality and you can keep everything intact. So keep that in mind when you do that sort of thing. We'll set a keyframe for scale and position and moves keyframes over by a touch and maybe we'll have this like come onto the side of the screen like this. So now we'll get this, boom. And let's go forward to like two seconds or something. Let's add a keyframe for position and scale. And then here we'll have it like scale up by a touch. Maybe we'll have it position over. So now we can kind of see what's going on, on the screen by a little bit. So maybe this happens. And then maybe it will continue to maybe go back into its place. And maybe for, maybe we'll add a keyframe for position and move forward by a little bit and, you know, Maybe we'll bring it to this side or, you know, whatever, you know, it all depends what you want to do, but this entire phone's intact and you can do whatever you want with it. So you can put emphasis on what's happening on the screen or you can, you know, rotate this in 3D space if you want to. So, you know, it's a lot of cool things you can do and things that you should definitely take a look at. Of course, let's go ahead and turn on motion blur for this layer, go into the mobile device uh, and turn it on for any layers that have uh, animation to it. Just make sure that will be blurred out and look natural. And if you are following along with this video, this is what you should have gotten, something very similar to this. Uh, however, this was a very basic tutorial, just a lot of you know simple animation and what's possible with this. But this is a nice introduction and this should have covered basically whatever you're trying to do and you should be good to go from here. So go ahead and create some awesome stuff. So if you guys did enjoy this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos just like this. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a good day.